Hello and welcome to this short tutorial on how to create custom shaders in Wonderland Engine. Custom shaders are a hidden feature in Wonderland Engine. They aren't documented or advertised anywhere because we are currently still working on the API and these features are experimental. So in the future they may break, so please be aware of that. But they are very, very powerful nevertheless, and that's why we are going to, in this tutorial, look at how to create a fake reflection in a custom shader with Wonderland Engine. So let's get started by creating a new folder, and we'll call this folder Shaders. It is important that it's called Shaders exactly because Wonderland Engine will pick up this name, and now you'll be able to create new shaders in this folder. But instead of using the default template for shaders, we're going to go to the Wonderland Engine installation route, which on Windows is C Program Files Wonderland Wonderland Engine, and we'll find a shaders folder in here. And this shaders folder on Mac exists in the application directory in resources, and on Linux you'll find it in user local share Wonderland Engine. From here we can drag and drop the Fong shader into our project and rename it to fake reflection frag. Now with this new shader, if you double click this, Windows will open it with whatever you configured it to open .frag files. Usually this is not configured by default, so go ahead and uh, show this in folder, right click the shader and then select open with and choose another application or open with if it's not configured yet. You can then select the application you want to use and select always use this app to open .frag files and then it will open whatever editor you chose. And this will open up the shader in our case and we can see there's lots of stuff going on here but what we want to find is this material struct and this struct defines which materials are valid to be used for our shader. So what the material effectively looks like. And we can add properties here. For example, another texture. And this will tell Wonderland Engine that there's one more texture property. And it's important that we name this variable with the texture suffix because Wonderland Engine will use this to understand that this is not a unsigned integer, but a texture index for which it should use a texture drop-down box in the UI. And if we go ahead to Wonderland Engine and go to Views, Resources and Pipelines, we will see two weird pipeline looking uh, objects in the end here. And that is th because this is an experimental feature, there are still some issues with it. So what we need to do is reload the project. And let me do that real quick. Now that I reloaded the project, it will show fake reflection opaque and fake reflection opaque textured, which are the two pipelines that are generated for our fake reflection fragment shader. So clicking on fake opaque, we see all of these pipeline uh, features as before. We don't need to change anything here. So let's go and apply this pipeline to our pink cube here in the middle. We can do so by finding, clicking on the object, finding the mesh, and then scrolling down to material, opening the material panel to then change the Fung opaque to fake reflection opaque. This will turn the object black because the properties are not actually transferred from the Fung material yet. So what we will need to do is set up some basic material properties here. And I'll just really quickly go through the motion here. And finally, with that set up, we can see the object is still mostly black, but we already see our reflection texture, our reflection texture property here with the drop down for textures. We don't have any textures yet though, so let's just go ahead and find a Creative Commons Zero texture that we can use. In this case, I found a nice one on ambientcg.com. And we can go ahead and download the, the tone map version with a 
2K texture resolution. And then we can just right click and save this image into our project. Now switching back to the root, we see sky.jpg here uh, appearing in the project and we can just drag and drop this file into the re reflection texture slot and that will allow us now to use this texture inside um, Wonderland engine and if we go to resources and textures we'll find this texture here and also find it in images where we can see okay it's 2048 by 1024 pixels in size. I found some code in the internet to for sampling a equirectangular texture. This is nothing you need to necessarily know by heart. But effectively, what this code now does is it takes a texture index. Um, in this case, this texture index will come from our material and be our reflection texture and a direction and converts this direction into a UV coordinate at which we want to sample the reflection texture. And then it'll return the color. So sample equirect is basically just sampling the equirectangular texture using a direction in instead of a UV set. And to make this work, this texture atlas function is only defined if we have textured specified. So let's make sure that we only use it if textured is specified, but this also means that the uh, fake reflection um, shader will only work if we use the textured pipeline. So switching to fake reflection opaque textured, we will already immediately see with our uh, reflection texture selected, we get some um, result here. That is because I, in the end here, already added um, an override for the out color to always be just the result of sampling the reflection texture using the world position and the world position because this cube is in the center will always sample um, in directions ar around the center and already be kind of a cube map so if we would want we can um, set this to the bottom and scale this up by some very large amount So with this now being double-sided, we basically have ourselves a uh, environment map. Uh, we can see it's uh, pretty much um, still too small. We could go ahead and just scale this up to 100. And then it would be far enough away. Now we see there's some clipping happening. And that is because the view is only um, 100 into the distance, the far clipping plane is 100 into the distance. So we can go to views, project settings and find the editor uh, tab here and then just change the far to something slightly higher like 120 or maybe even 150 is necessary. And then we can see that this kind of behaves correctly. Um, one thing that we'll notice is if we run this in the browser, then we still have the same problem and that is because now it doesn't use the editor camera but the camera uh, for non-VR. So we go to the non-VR camera of the player, go to properties and then find the view component and again here for we can set to 150. We can make sure to copy this value and then just do the same thing for the left and the right eye such that in VR it would also be correct. Now we have ourselves a uh, wonderful cube map. I see there's like a little bit of clipping still happening so let's just scale down the cube a little bit uh, such that this is not causing any more issues. And now we have this wonderful scene but since the cube map is not actually what we want we will instead scale this back down to what it originally was. That was just a quick detour to show you how you would create basically a sky. And if we uh, scale this back down to dot five, we can put this object here. And as you can see, if we move around, it doesn't really change the object at all. And obviously we want this to react to our view precision. So let's figure out how to do that. What we want to do is instead of replacing the entire color, we just want to add the reflection on top or mix in the reflection. So let's uh, add a new 
um, reflectivity value. And we're just going to make this a float and call it reflectivity. And then we can, in the end, mix the out color with our reflection value and the out color we computed before using the reflectivity value from the material. So let's go to Wonderland Engine, select the material, and then set the reflectivity property to dot five. And we'll see that it will now blend between the pink material and the reflectivity. And if we change this material to be something less pinkish, but instead something gray or white, then we'll see that we have somewhat of a reflection. And if we tune down, drag down or up this value, then we'll get more or less of the reflection value. Since this is still not actually behaving like a reflection, we need to still go ahead and reflect the view direction. So what we want here is we want to use the view direction that is the direction from the eye to the pixel that we're currently shading. And we're going to reflect that in a second using the normal. But now if we move around, we can see that it's now at least somehow reacting to our view and acting like a window into our equirectangular texture. So let's go ahead and finally do that reflection. So we use the reflect function from GLSL and we reflect using the normal. And if we save that and go back, then we'll see it will now actually look like a reflection, behave like a reflection and actually look like a beautiful reflective object, even though it really doesn't reflect the right things. We can look up into the leaves from top of the object and we can just reuse this material or this, uh, this pipeline for other materials. In this case, I'll just select pink here and make all the objects reflective. And then we'll see this is now reflecting everything wonderfully. And if we uh, then package and run this in the browser, we will see this works just fine in the browser as well. And it will just f run on the Oculus Quest as well. And with that, I hope you learned something interesting and you now unlocked the power of custom shaders for you in Wonderland Engine. If you haven't done so, make sure to check out Wonderland Engine for free and please come and join the Wonderland Engine Discord server. It's the best way to ask for support, especially for these undocumented and hidden features in Wonderland Engine. Have a great day.